Hello everyone, you can call me Sim, and today I'm going to show a few things I usually do when I create my Sims, which I think could help make your Sims look a little bit more realistic and closer to reality, but keeping the aesthetic the game has, that is, without using any custom content, mods, or super uncanny valley skins and the like. This is just the way I personally like to make my Sims, of course, there's nothing wrong with the cartoonish look of the Sims in game. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. Now, I haven't seen a lot on this topic because usually when you look up realistic sim most of the videos that come up use a lot of cc and alpha hair or super realistic skins or even when they don't they still use some level of default skin replacement default eyes replacement or cc skin details anyway there are a few videos and tips out there without any cc and they do give some good suggestions i just wanted to put my own spin on this and then maybe you can integrate these tips with those you find elsewhere. But let's not waste any more time or this video will take forever and let's just get to it. So it might seem like a trivial thing to say but the first tip I have is take inspiration from reality. Now I'm not going to go too much in depth on this because I want to show something else in this video but as a general rule if you have a specific person in mind that you want to make in the game, just open up your browser and look up pictures of real people. Young woman, old woman, blonde man, ginger teenager, whatever. Just take some references, take a picture that you like and try to make it in The Sims. And just look at what their face features are, what type of eyes they have, what type of nose, mouth, eyebrows, what the size and proportion of everything is compared to the rest of the face and the rest of the features, and then just use the presets in the game to get as close as possible to what you're trying to make. So just click on the body, the face parts, and just choose a preset, and then just tweak them and drag them to get the result you want. Don't forget to also look at the shape of the face itself. So if the person you're trying to make has more of a round face or a narrow face or if the jawline is lower or higher, uh, if they have a heart-shaped face, a thin chin, a longer chin, a more elongated face. So just take into account the shape of the face itself, not just the face features. Same goes for body shape. Now, if you couldn't find pictures showing the whole body and not just the face of a person, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be the same person at all, just try to find other pictures of other people that portray the whole person standing up, um, choose one that you think would go well with the face you made, and again, looking at what their body features are like, try to drag every part to get as close as possible. And don't forget that there are different body shapes, that not everyone has the same body type, so look carefully if they have maybe uh, narrow shoulders and wider hips, or narrow hips and broader shoulders, so just try to see what their body looks like and try to replicate it in the game. Uh, one way to go about it is choosing as reference someone you know in real life, for example, that you can look at from different perspectives. Or take as reference someone famous, like a singer or an actor, so when you search for their name, you can get a lot of pictures taken from different angles, even like body-wise, so you can actually look at their body and again replicate it in the game, and you don't have to mix up features from different people. So the second tip, which is the one I'm going to focus on in this video, is take inspiration from a sim, as when we open cast, we never start making a sim completely from scratch, like from a completely blank canvas. We always have a random sim show up and you can keep randomizing them, so you can use that sim as a base, as an inspiration, to then adjust to make the sim you want. And it's a good way to do it, because when you randomize a sim, and they go through all of the presets in the game, so all of the eyes, all of the noses, face shapes, jaw shapes, body shapes. So it's a good way to avoid doing the same thing over and over again when you create a sim, like using the same kind of noses, eyes, mouth, faces. Um, and it's a good way to also have variety and diversity, which is important when it comes to reality, because no one looks the same. So you can keep randomizing sims, and then keep those features, but just tweak them a bit to make them look more normal and realistic-like. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use the original sim, close to our hearts, one and only, ah. Babs Amour. 
This seems is a work of art. I mean, look at her. Anyway, so first things first, whenever I want to make a sim, the first thing I do is I open the cheat console and I type cast clock speed zero and press enter. And what this does is it makes them stand still even when you zoom out because I really cannot understand what I'm doing when they keep moving around and I have to drag body parts. So this way they don't move and I have a clear view of what I'm doing. After doing that, before I even start modifying the face, usually I like to adjust the body proportions first because it helps me get a sense of what the whole person should look like. So when you randomize a sim or when you find a sim in cast, not always, but like 80-90% of the time, they come up with kind of a big head for the type of body they have. And especially when they are of a thin body type, of a thin constitution, they also tend to have really small belly and waistline. So one of the first things I do is usually I shrink the face, just make it smaller a little bit, and I drag everything out a little bit, just to make it look more normal. And remember, we want to keep her features, so her body type, so we don't want to modify that. So she looks like kind of an apple kind of body, uh, which is a broader shoulders, a broader top part in general. She has kind of a big breast uh, and narrow hips, so we want to keep that. We're not modifying the features of the sin, so we just want to make it look a little bit more you know, proportioned compared to everything. And same thing on the side. We drag the belly out a little bit. And one thing also that I always see in, not always, but like I usually see in The Sims is anti-gravity boobs. So what that means is that, especially when they have big breasts, those are really high up. Like, so in reality, those things are heavy, especially if you have big ones. They do have some weight, so drag them down. And another thing I like to do is I go into the tattoo category, not to give them any tattoo because she already has one, um, but just because you can see them without any clothes on, without actually removing the clothes. And another thing is the, the feet. They usually have kind of small feet, but they're all right. They're all right in her. I also usually drag the slider, the weight slider, a little bit up. Because these sliders are not very realistic. Like here it's in the middle already and she's still very thin. So there's no real risk in dragging it up a little bit. All right, so we're done with the body. We can move to the face now. So when we start modifying the face of a sim, what we want to start doing is give the sim a relaxed expression as a base. Because again, not always, but most of the times when you randomize a sim, they come up with this kind of expression, which is what I call the constantly surprised expression. Because they always have this ooh kind of look. Like they have super high eyebrows, super big wide open eyes, and this tiny little mouth in this smiling position. Like they're always pleasantly surprised about something. And no one looks like that in real life when they have like a normal relaxed face. So in this case, it comes down to only three simple steps, which are lower the eyebrows, lower the eyelids, and lower the mouth corners. It's that simple. And I know she looks a little bit bored and annoyed right now, but we'll fix that. So after doing this, you can proceed adjusting the face features proportions. I'm not going to change too much because again we're keeping her features um, but I just want to like maybe adjust this little expression here, this eyebrows expression because she looks a little bit sad with that kind of eyebrows um, and just maybe the mouth a little bit, just make it a little bit smaller but still keep it like big. And one thing I find myself doing basically every time is I make the mouth a little bit wider just a bit, 
because again they have this very small mouth and I make the eyes smaller because sims usually have really big eyes but just be careful because you can start developing a small eye syndrome I've been there I tend to make my sims eyes always super super small because what happens here is I see the big eyes as kind of a cartoonish feature so to try and compensate that, I try to make the eyes of the Sims really, really small. And I'm trying to grow out of that habit, because if you actually look at pictures of real people in real life, uh, you'll notice that some people do have kind of big eyes. And it's fine to have big eyes, it's not a cartoonish feature. So that's why it's so important to have some references, to have to look up some pictures of real people and try to see what different people look like. So just be careful, don't always make the eyes too small. Like, just make them a little bit smaller, because some people do have big eyes. Another thing you should not forget is the neck. Now, in this case, she has kind of a normal neck. Uh, but many times, sims can end up having really thin necks. And that's kind of, like, weird, considering that they have really big heads to begin with. So, <laughs> even in the game, even, even in the cartoonish style of the game, it's kind of like, how does that neck support the big head they have uh, but in this case she she kind of has a normal neck but usually people don't have really thin necks so moving on to the profile this time we at least have some sort of base to go from compared to when you're looking pictures of real people and many times you will not find a side view of the same person so this time we are working with what the sims look like and again, we're not going to modify our features, so we're not going to give her like a different kind of nose bridge or rotation of the nose. But there is one thing that sims can end up having when you randomize them. Um, and it is this kind of this inward concave face. So again, as it happens in real life, not everyone looks the same. So of course there are people having a more flat straight down profile or people that have their profile going a little bit outward so there really is no universal rule on how to go about everything but i feel we can be safe pushing our profile out a little bit i would just want to have kind of a straight line going here from the forehead to the chin and then we can go back in and try to not rotate but push everything in a little bit to give it some balance again. And we can pull the eyes further. Maybe the chin, maybe the jaw a little bit out. Just again to keep that line going. One thing you should watch again when you're working with a sims profile is not in this case, but sometimes they can have the mouth corner too much in the front. And I feel like we can usually push it back because again, otherwise it gives the impression that the Sim is having this tiny surprised mouth like they're doing the... is it called the duck lips, I think? When they're like posing for a selfie, <laughs> I don't know. So just bring it backward a little bit and it's gonna be fine. Now, I can't really do much about the chalky looking hairstyles and the unrealistic colors, especially this mustard blonde she has. Obviously, some hairstyle look a little bit better than others. I do like, for example, the braid coming with Get Together, because it doesn't look too bad. And I think it suits her style. There are some decent ones in base game as well. I kind of like this one, or this one doesn't look too bad, or this one. She is an original base game sim, so... I understand that back then there weren't these many options. Anyway, we'll go with this one for now, because I kind of like it. But if I can leave this blonde for the hair, one thing I kind of want to do is change the eyebrow color. We're not going to change the eyebrow style, because again, keeping the features. But I really don't like this blonde color on her eyebrows. So I think we're going to go for something darker. Maybe like that. Because it's not too unrealistic even in real life like blonde people can have kind of darker eyebrows and another thing is the eye color so we're gonna keep them blue but when it comes to blue-eyed sims the two options i like to use are either this one or this one 
I feel like it's kind of a less saturated color, which I think it looks a little bit better and a bit more realistic. Right, so for the last step, this is something I discovered quite recently as I was experimenting with the new makeup sliders, but I have to say, it became kind of like one of my favorite things to do when I create a sim now. So if I have the chance to do it, I do it. But it basically is, use makeup to add dimension and depth to the face. So this all started out because I was trying to recreate, you know how when you look at all those custom content sims up there, a lot of them tend to have this very bright redness on the nose and cheeks, which I suppose should give them kind of a cute, embarrassed look, kind of. Well, I don't know, maybe they just want them to look like they caught a cold. And it's always been weird to me, because usually, in real life, people tend to hide the redness on their face with makeup, so it's kind of weird that when we make a sim, we want them to have this very bright red nose and cheeks. But anyway, so it might also be a good way to maybe have kind of a natural look of the same, like when they're not wearing makeup, just have a plain, kind of realistic, natural look and skin tone. So I went into the makeup category and I s tried to see what I could use to achieve that kind of look. Maybe not that exaggerated, but just a tiny bit of redness. Now, in all honesty, I really only have just a couple expansion packs, so I don't know if there's anything else like this in the game, like if you buy everything else from the company. But obviously, the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to cheek and nose redness is look into the blush section. So unfortunately, the only slider that works in the blush section is the opacity one. You cannot change the hue, saturation, or the brightness. I really wish we could because it would be very useful, but I don't know why they made this decision to not make these sliders available for the blush section. But luckily, they gave us the new MAC blushes, which is exactly what we're going to use here. And they are not too bad because they do give some nice kind of contouring on the face already when you put them on, even on the nose a little bit, if you see. But we can go even further. Now, we'll go back to the blush section afterward, because we need to do something else first. And I need to do something else first, because then I can adjust the coloration of the blush accordingly better after the next step. But it's already a good thing to have this blush going visually. So the next step is actually going into the face paint. So obviously now, with the new update of the game and the 21 years celebration, they did give us some new items from some community creators, including this one, which is really, really cool. I really like the highlights it gives. Uh, and you can also use this to add some dimension. It really works very well. But it's not what I'm going to focus on right now, um, because I'm going to go with these two. And you might be thinking, what are you doing that looks like a clown? No, I say, this looks like a clown. <laughs> Jokes aside. Obviously the sliders work with the face paint as well. And this time, we also have all of them working, so the hue, the saturation and the brightness, not just the opacity. So I thought, what would happen if I try experimenting with the other sliders? And what happened is, you can actually change the color of the face paint. So starting from the white base, as you could see, you can go and make the face paint kind of a reddish color. Now the more you go up, the redder is gonna look. And this is where you have to experiment what kind of works with the skin tone of the sim you're working on. Once you found something that looks kind of reddish, you can just Bring the opacity down, now that's too down, because you can barely even see. So really, it's just a matter of trying to move the sliders and see what works and what doesn't. You can up the brightness, brightness a little bit, you can go further with the saturation a little bit. Now obviously, the further you go, the more the edges are going to be visible on the face, and it kind of looks bad, so you have to kind of work it out a little bit and see what doesn't look too bad. 
Obviously, it's not perfect. You'll still see some of the edges going on. I think this is kind of a good result. You can kind of still see the edges of the face paint, but it's not really noticeable, like, unless you really want to see it. And it's just adding a little bit of redness to the face. Now, I'm just going to save this. That's the new feature. And I'm going to show you what happens when I remove it. So, see, it's just very slight. But it does add some redness, some more redness to the face and to the nose. Same thing goes with just the nose one. And once again, you're gonna bring the saturation up. And I think you can go even, even further with just the nose one, because you're still going to be able to see the edges, but it's not as bad as the cheeks. Even if you see a little bit of the edges in the nose, it's not going to be too bad. And you can kind of give, again, this I caught a cold kind of look to the scene. <laughs> but I'm just going to go with the, with the cheeks one. And I really, really do like this solution because, again, even if it's weird and in real life people try to hide the redness on their face, I feel like in The Sims it really adds a lot of depth and three-dimensionality to the face of The Sim. It kind of feels like it also gives some sort of texture to the skin. And anyway, I feel like it just gives The Sim some more liveliness. It just makes them feel a little bit more alive. So once you've done that, you can go back here and see what blush kind of matches and blends in with that redness so you can either go with this one i'll leave this one i think this blends in kind of okay continuing on the natural kind of look we move to the lipstick section and once again you're gonna go to one of the mac makeup and thank goodness the lipsticks and blushes are good because the eye makeup sucks mm. so we're gonna use this one um and once again we're gonna use the sliders to bring the opacity down a little bit and what this does is again it adds a little bit of redness to the lips just in the middle so it's not an actual lipstick like one you would use when you use makeup it feels more like just a natural redness of the lips and the fact that it's faded out on the edges kind of makes it look even more realistic in a way. So I do like to use this as well to give this kind of natural look to the Sims. And same goes for the eyes shadows. So she already has some sort of like depth to the eyes, to the under eyes. But we can use the makeup itself, like one of these last ones that have some sort of shadow under the eye. I tend to go very very subtle because it does add some more details to the face but I don't want to go like full sleepless night mode. So I do like to use the red one and now she looks like a zombie but again we're gonna use the opacity slider and kind of go down a little bit just give some level of depth to the makeup. And it really depends on what you want to do. Uh, if you don't want to go for this kind of look one of my favorite makeup, one of my favorite eyeshadow to use is this one. Because I feel like it has some nice shadow and brightness part. And I use this brown one and again bring down the opacity to just give some sort of dimension to the eyelid. And I also usually make the eyeliner less visible. Not too much, but it kind of gives that kind of blended in effect. Like when you wear makeup throughout the day, it tends to kind of fade out a little bit. But that will do for the last tip. Now I'm just finishing it up and tweaking things a little bit to make the same just how I want her to be. But that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I could actually give you some good useful tips. If you did like the video, don't forget to please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you like my content. It would help me out a lot. And hopefully this very first commentary wasn't too boring and I hope you could understand what I said. I tend to go very fast when I speak and English is not my first language so I hope I did well. But that's gonna be it for now. Obviously thank you so much for watching and hoping you have a fun time around here. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.